do not miss any of the tutorial. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Kyle Craigle and I'm an artist at Cirque du Soleil. Hey guys, welcome to Color Me Cirque, the Cirque du Soleil makeup tutorial series. My name is Kyle and I'm going to be here every week to replicate some of my favorite Cirque du Soleil makeup looks so that you guys can follow along and transform with me. Now, today I'm very excited because we are doing one of my favorite Cirque du Soleil characters, which also wears one of my favorite Cirque du Soleil's makeup. This character is the Trickster from Kuza. Make sure that you check out the description box down below for all the tools and all the products that you're going to need for today's look. If you are ready to color me Cirque and follow along and transform, stick around because we're about to get started. Hey guys, welcome back to yet another makeup tutorial. Today, we are doing one of my favorite characters. This is the trickster from our show, Kuza. If you're ready to get started, then just sit back, relax, and grab your brushes. Since we are doing an eyebrow cover, I'm actually just taking a cotton pad with some 99% alcohol, and I'm rubbing it through my eyebrows. It helps get rid of any natural oils that are already sitting on my face, and it just helps the eyebrows glue down completely so that we have a nice flat surface to work on. All right guys, step one to this makeup is an eyebrow cover. Today we're going to be using the Prosade cream and a little spatula. Now, if you don't have Prosade, there are tons of different ways that you can cover your eyebrows. There are lots of different tutorials all across YouTube with multiple products. So, in reality, you should just use whichever method that you please. But today I'm just taking the spatula and the Prosade cream and I am pressing it into my eyebrows, just following the grain of my brow. Today the point of the eyebrow cover is not to completely get rid of all of the texture and completely flatten out the eyebrow. It's more just to have a layer on top of the brow so that we can put some full coverage cream and have a nice opaque effect with our colors that we apply later on. And of course once you have completed one side you should do the other. Once I'm happy with the amount of adhesive that I've applied and I have let it dry for just a few minutes, I'm taking a powder puff and a translucent setting powder and really pressing it into that glue. With the setting powder, we just want to get rid of any tackiness that the glue may have left so that we can easily apply makeup on top of it. Once those eyebrows are nice and set, I'm just going to grab a big powder brush and remove all of the excess powder. All right, we are going to kick it off today with a white cream foundation, straight up white, plain white with a regular makeup sponge. You're going to add two little dots on your chin as I have done, and we are also going to add some of this foundation under the eyes and up the cheekbone, as well as on top of the outer portion of the eyes and on the outer portion of our eyebrow cover. All right, continuing on with yet another cream foundation, this is actually a very, very light highlight shade. I know this might kind of look white, but it is actually skin tone. I'm going to apply that with a sponge under the two corners of my bottom lip, practically touching, or actually touching, the white that I applied on the chin. I'm going to apply this on the forehead. Let's get a nice round shape in the center, and then also extending that foundation out following the white lines that we already have existing on the forehead. I'm also going to apply this foundation under the eyes, but more towards the inner portion of my face. This foundation will eventually go from the inside under eye, if you will, to then blend into that white that we've pulled on the outer portion of the under eye. All right, and once you have that foundation applied to the central portions of your face, you're also gonna grab that foundation and apply it on your jawline, just for fun, why not? We love a highlight. All right guys, we are highlighted, which means that it is now time to move on to our final overall foundation color. This time I'm taking a cream foundation that matches my skin tone on a new sponge and I'm applying this everywhere where we have not applied foundation, including the neck and blending down the neck as well. We cannot forget about the neck. Don't forget. <laughs> okay, once you have that foundation color applied everywhere, we are going to start to blend everything together. To blend everything together, I'm just going to use the three sponges that we use to apply the three different foundation colors and I'm just going to link everything together. Now keep in mind, for example, if I'm using my white sponge on the white, I kind of want to make sure that that white never completely touches, say, the darkest color, which would be the foundation. Otherwise, I'm going to come back into my white and the white will be a little bit darker and change because of that skin tone. So make sure that you're using the right sponge on the right foundation color and just blending out the edges of that color. And then once you get into another area where there's a different color, make sure that you're using that sponge as well. Am I making sense? Basically, just make sure that you're using the respective sponge to blend out the 
outer edges of the color that is on that sponge. Once you start to go into a deeper color or a lighter color too much, the mixing starts to get a little bit messier. So keep your sponges in the area where you've applied those specific colors as much as possible. So for this next portion, I'm actually going to use a hat. Now, this is not the actual hat that they would use in the show. This is a little test hat that they use for the makeup. The next shapes that we're gonna make are kind of based on the hat. However, if you don't have the hat, it's okay. Just follow along with what I'm doing on the screen. The shapes are pretty straightforward. All right, guys, today we are going to start off on the right eye. I am taking a red pencil. So for the first part, I'm starting on the outer portion of my eye and I'm just gonna follow this little peak that's in the hat here. So just to give you a little reference, I was always thinking about having the final line of that last peak shooting straight down towards my eye and it would end up being a little bit on the inside of the line of my lower lash line. Okay, once you've mapped out the outer corner of that eye, we are gonna draw two more lines evenly spaced according to the others and we're gonna connect them together. So now we're gonna kind of end up with like a little mountain range, if you will, with four peaks. The only tip that I would have for this makeup is that it's supposed to be organic, so as much as possible, even though it's really tough, try to draw the shapes of the peak with a single flick of the pencil. Once again, super tough, but that's just kind of the goal that you wanna have in mind while creating this shape. Now I'm going to take that pencil and I'm going to fill in a little area under those peaks it can be rough for now, we're gonna blend it out later. Same eye, same pencil. I'm going to draw a line under my lower lash line, making sure that I leave a space between the line and the lower lash line. I'm then going to mark the center and I'm going to draw another line from the inside of my eye down to that center. So we're actually, yet again, going to end up with a peaked shape under the eye. Once we've drawn the basic lines of this shape, I'm once again just going to fill it in roughly with a little bit of color under the shape that we created. Okay, now that you've completed the right side of your face, it's time to move on to the left side of your face. Now, for the left side of the face, we're basically going to repeat the exact same steps. I would give the same instructions for these steps, however, the shapes are slightly different. Keep in mind that I'm making these shapes according to a reference picture, therefore, you guys will kind of need to do the same using my video as a reference. What I will tell you is that this makeup is not supposed to be even. You'll see later on that there's a lot of things that happen on one side that do not happen on the other. So these eye shapes are actually not meant to look the same. So when they don't turn out the same at home, don't worry, it's supposed to look like that. So draw your four peaked shape above the eye and then draw your single peaked downward facing shape under the eye, leaving a space in between the line and your lower lash line. For the next step, I'm going in with a little precision brush. It's a small, flat, cat-tongued brush and a red cream. And I'm basically just gonna go through and finesse and blend all of the shapes that we laid down with the pencil. So, I'm going to go in and extend those lines with the brush, once again, trying to get them in one flick, if possible, and just filling in the space with the red color, making sure that it's relatively opaque. On the right side, I'm going to go under the eye and I'm gonna pull that center line way down. This is one of the uneven parts of this makeup. On the right side, the line under his eye goes way, 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 way down. Feel free to pull it way down, but I would say that your stopping point would be around your upper lip if you make it that far. If you don't feel like making it that far, that's okay. We're just gonna continue to finesse and blend the shapes on both sides. The only real thing to keep in mind is that the line under the right eye needs to be longer than the line under your left eye. All right, good job, you've done both eyes. Now just to finalize that blending, I'm taking the sponge that I had my white foundation on and I'm just lightly tapping on top of the eyebrow to really blend in the red shape with the white that's already laid down on my face. All right, ladies and gents, next we are going in with a blue foundation on the same sort of flat um, precision brush and we're gonna draw some blue lines around the white eye. The first line that you're gonna wanna draw is another peak extending on the outer portion of the eye. And on the inner portion of the eye, we're gonna draw two peaks. The first one that's closest to the inside of the face is going to be longer than the second one, which is slightly more towards the outside and a little smaller. You'll see what I'm talking about once I have drawn the shapes. It is still following the hat technically, so you can also use that as a reference. Once you've drawn those two lines, just pull that down the nose a little touch. All right, same brush, same product, just the different side. Now we are only going to draw one blue peak on the inside of the shape on the left side, and that's it. So once you've drawn that peak, you're all good to move on to the next step. Okay, now the top portion of the eyes is practically done. 
The next step, I'm just gonna take a little black eyeliner pencil and I'm gonna define the shape that we've already had under the eye. The only important note here is to make sure that the peak of that shape is right under the center of your iris as much as possible. We're just adding a little black to define this because we're gonna add some more later. All right, once you have that completed, we're actually gonna go in with the same black pencil and we're gonna draw another shape that's gonna connect the top portion of the left eye to the bottom portion. I imagine this as, well, I mean it is another peak, similarly to what we've been doing, but I kind of imagine this as like the little tail of a ribbon. So, from the lower lash line, you're just gonna draw another curve to then connect to the outside peak of the upper part of the eye. And continuing on in the same fashion, you can also grab a little definer brush and pull out those edges and finesse them just like we've done everywhere else. Okay, you guys, I am literally so thankful that we have finished this foundation portion. It is time for powder. So I'm just grabbing a translucent setting powder and a powder puff and I'm applying this generously all over the cream base that we just laid down. Just to give you guys an idea, in reality, these creams actually usually take me an hour if I'm being really picky and really precise. So if it's been about an hour, you're probably on track. Once you've finished applying the powder, grab a powder brush and remove the excess. All right, next I am taking a tiny little definer brush and a red airbrush product and I'm just going to redefine all of the red shapes that we've made. Once you've laid down that airbrush product, I'm going to take another definer brush that's a little bit bigger, but this time I'm going to take a red eyeshadow and I'm going to set all of that in place and I'm going to blend the outer edges a little bit. Now, if you don't have this airbrush product, feel free to just go in straight with the eyeshadow and define and blend everything normally. And once you've done the right side, repeat the same steps on the left side. All right, that red is looking beautiful. Now it's time to add a little bit of yellow. I am grabbing a smaller flat eyeshadow brush and a yellow eyeshadow. This particular shadow has a bit of a sheen to it and I'm just going to use this eyeshadow to blend in those red edges and I'm gonna apply this over the area where our eyebrow is. Okay, once you have the yellow nice and blended with that red on your eyebrow, you're going to take another flat eyeshadow brush and this time we're going in with a loose gold pigment and I'm going to apply that all over the eyelid, blending up a little bit towards the eyebrows, and I'm also going to bring that down the insides of my nose, following those blue lines that we've already created. Okay, next up we are going to go in with, yet again, yes, another definer brush. You probably need about a thousand of these to complete this makeup, and a turquoise eyeshadow, and we're just gonna go through and define and blend the blue portions of both eyes. All right, grabbing the same red eyeshadow that we used before and the same little definer brush that you used before, we're just gonna apply that red all over the bottom portion of the eyes. Feel free to blend this out a little bit. You don't have to follow every line exactly as it is on the bottom. We just wanna bring back the intensity and a little bit of a blended effect under the eyes. All right, guys, take a deep breath because this next step can be quite long. We are going to take a little eyeliner brush, a little defining brush, and a cream black eyeliner, and we're gonna define under the eyes. So basically, exactly where we put that black pencil before, we're gonna draw some lines under. Once you get to the under portion of the right eye, remember to extend that line way down your face. Feel free to go big. Now, for the inner corner, we do want to go a little bit more detailed and precise than what we could do with the pencil. So once you've reached that inner corner, we're actually going to pull a little sharp curved line down the nose. If you want another little reference, you kind of want to think that the end of that little curved line would end up meeting that blue line that you have running down the nose as well. All right, you're just gonna repeat the same steps on the other side, redefining whatever black we had already laid down with that cream liner. Just remember that on the left side, the peak under the eyes does not go as far down as the right side. That's right, you guessed it. We are going to go in with the same cream liner and the same brush, and we are going to draw an eyeliner on the upper portion of our eye, AKA the upper lash line. Now, this liner is huge, guys. And when I say huge, I mean huge. Like, we are drawing a huge winged liner. So if there's a lot of black on your eyelids, don't be surprised because there's a lot of black, <laughs> there's a lot of black on my eyelids as well. Remember that you can use the peaks that you've already drawn on the upper portion of the eye to guide you as to where your liner is supposed to go. We are not going to connect the top liner and the bottom liner. There is going to be a space left on both sides. To continue on with this huge liner, I'm actually going to extend my inner corner just as I did on the bottom. So just starting from the outer edge of that inner corner and kind of pulling down, you can go ahead and parallel almost that line that you created on the bottom. 
I apologize for the blur. <laughs> I just wanted to bring you guys in a little closer to show you that I'm just repeating the same steps on the left side. The only difference is that we are actually going to pull that liner and continue into that ribbon shape that we created on the left side versus the right side, which is completely open. So once you finish that big liner, you can go ahead and take that same turquoise color that we use in a small definer brush, and you're actually just gonna pull the black liner and the turquoise color into the crease. So if your eyes are open and you're looking forward, you actually do wanna feel a little bit of the turquoise color creeping in to the yellow, but I would say that this effect is left more for when the character would be blinking or looking down that you would notice that turquoise line. Just follow what I'm doing on camera, and I promise that you will turn out looking beautiful. <laughs> All right, same definer brush and same cream liner, and I'm just going to add some black definition in the grooves of those peaks that we created. So if we wanna go like kindergarten terms, I'm gonna add black definition in the valleys of all of our little mountains. All right, next I'm taking a little eyeliner brush and I'm going to go in with a white water-based product. So this is basically just a face paint and I'm going to fill in that little space. Remember that little space that we left? I'm gonna fill in that little space under the lower lash line. On the right side, I'm just going to pull those lines out and lightly blend them into my foundation color versus the left side where I'm gonna fill in that entire ribbon tail shape that we made. This white is going to extend from the outer portion of the eye all the way to the inner corners of the eye, kind of blending down onto the nose, just as I'm doing on my right side now. As we're going into the left side, I just wanna remind you guys to make sure that that little peak under the center of your eye is nice and defined, and this step is the time to do it because this white water-based product will actually be able to cover up the black cream liner that we just laid down a little bit. Same thing with these ribbon tail edges. I'm actually gonna pull some of these white lines on top of the black just to make them a little bit more precise and kind of correct the shape in the way that I want it. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right guys, we are going to dip back into that red airbrush product with a little eyeliner defining brush again. We're just gonna define some red lines under the eyes. So these lines are actually supposed to be a little curvy, a little zigzaggy, a little funky. Now. In a lot of the versions of this makeup that I've seen, these lines really vary, and I believe that it's more of like kind of a personal preference as to how zigzaggy you want them, how curvy you want them. I did follow the step-by-step, -step, so you could use me as a pretty good reference, but honestly, just have fun with these lines and kind of do what you feel. This character is eccentric and funky and colorful, so use those words and apply the makeup with those words in mind. If you don't have this airbrush product, you can go in with a red water-based product, or you could even grab that powder eyeshadow and just make sure that you apply them with a smaller definer brush and make those lines nice and clear. All right, so for the next step, we are actually going to add some metallic foil around our eyes and all of the areas where we have red. So I'm gonna go in with a little cotton swab and the same prosade glue that we used to cover up our eyebrows, and I'm just gonna create some little dots and some little shapes and some little lines in all of my red areas. Once again, this makeup is organic. Do what you feel. You can follow me as a reference. Before we apply that metallic foil on top of the glue, we actually have to let it set up and dry. So for now, we are going to move on to the next step, which is defining the lips. I'm gonna go in with the same pencil, actually, that I use for my eyes because it is a lip pencil, and I'm going to define the shape. On the upper lip, we want to kind of have a smiling effect, if you will. And on the bottom lip, we actually want to define the bottom lip relatively normally in the center. However, for the ends, we kind of want to bring it up quite sharply in a smooth but kind of square shape. So I'm actually not going all the way to the outside edges of my lips, I'm pulling it up to connect to the upper lip before my actual lip ends. I must apologize guys, I'm a little bit out of frame. I'm sorry, I wanted to give you guys a nice up close view, but basically I'm just going in with the same pencil and I'm going to fill in the outer corners of the lip, leaving a little space in the center. You can do this using the red pencil or the red cream that we've also used previously in the makeup. Once you have finished defining the red of the lips with your combination or lack thereof of the two red products that we were using, I'm going in with a small definer brush and that super light highlight shade, not white, but that super light skin tone highlight shade in the center of the lip. Once again, I know that it looks white, but it's actually the skin tone highlight shade, I promise. And I'm just gonna blend that with my brush and by patting my lips together. And once your lips are nice and blended, you're just gonna slap some more translucent setting powder on them with a powder puff. And same thing, you're just gonna grab your powder brush and remove the excess. 
All right, and just like the eyes, we are going to define the lips. So I'm actually gonna go in with the same cream black liner and the little definer brush, and I'm going to completely outline my bottom lip. We are also gonna use the same product to define the upper lip. So the outer edges of your smile should actually be quite black, and we are gonna pull those black lines all the way up to about the peaks of the upper lips. So once I have my basic outline, I'm going to take that black cream liner and add just a little bit more on the outsides because we're going to fade these edges in. So I'm just roughly adding some of that liner on the outside, and I am then going to take a small definer brush and that red eyeshadow, and I'm going to blend that black into the lip and use the red to bring the red back out everywhere on the lip. Okay, and the last step of the lips is to take that flat eyeshadow brush and that gold pigment that we used earlier on our eyelids and just highlight the center of that bottom lip. Blend with whichever method you prefer. As you can see, I love to smack my lips together to do it. I think it's the easiest way, but feel free to go crazy with the brush or your finger. All right, guys, lips are looking great. Now we're gonna go back in and apply the red foil over the dried glue. So. With this particular transfer foil, I'm going to apply the matte side directly to my face. I'm going to rub it in and warm it up with my fingers just a little bit, and I'm going to use brisk, sharp pulling movements to allow the foil to transfer onto my face. Now, sometimes the foil can be kind of hit or miss, and if you end up pulling off some makeup or the foil doesn't end up completely transferring, that's okay. Just go back in with the glue wherever you want it, pat the glue down, wait for it to dry, and come back again with the foil. Okay, next I'm going to take a little definer brush and yet again that red airbrush product and I'm going to draw a nice fun shape on the left jawline. So I'm going to start on the middle of my jawline and I'm going to bring it into my chin and I'm going to twirl it back out in a round shape back towards my left side. I'll finesse that quickly and then I'm going to end up pulling that line all the way on my jawline up to my ear. Once you're happy with that line, we are going to add some more flicks or some more peaks if you will. Um, just follow along with what I'm doing. There's usually about five or six in between your ear and the chin shape. So just try to space them evenly and have fun with this. Remember that it's organic. It doesn't have to be perfect. If one's a little longer than the other, if one's a little fatter than the other, it's all good. This is just going to add a nice little definition and a nice punch of color to the outside of the face. We're gonna apply that same product around the outsides of our ears on both sides, but since I'm already on the left side, I'm starting on my left. So once again, this is really honestly quite freehand and it really doesn't matter if the edges are a little bit funky and bumpy. It's actually kind of preferable in a way, I guess. All right, and lastly, we are going to define both of our nostrils with that red product in a nice, fun little curvy shape. Now, as much as I would have loved to get these even, they're not even. Unfortunately, I just feel as though they're never gonna be even. Try to get them as even as possible, and if they're not even and they're a little funky, it actually looks really good with this makeup because, once again, I will reiterate, none of it is equal. Okay, next we're going in with a medium-sized eyeshadow brush, and this is actually a light, sort of white gold pigment. If you were to look at it in the container, it does look white, but if it catches the light, it has a little bit of a reflect of gold, just to give you an idea of what the pigment is. I'm gonna apply this down the bridge of the nose and on the forehead, on both of my nostrils, on my chin, inside the swirl, and on the outside of the swirl. I'm then going to also apply it on the jawbone on my right side, which is where we don't have the red design. I'm gonna apply it under both corners of my bottom lip, and I'm also going to apply it on the very, very, very inside of my cheeks, under the red shape that we have going on very close to the nose. Just. Think of vamping up those highlights and really bringing those highlights out. That's basically what we're doing with this powder. Once you're all highlighted, this is actually the last step. We are just going to quickly throw a light coat of mascara on the upper lashes only just to make sure that our lashes look just as black as our big winged liner is. Woohoo! Congratulations! That was the last step of the makeup, so this makeup is now complete. Super long, super detailed, but super worth it. I think it looks super beautiful. I hope that you guys enjoyed following along as much as I enjoyed doing it. All right guys, that's it. You are now all trickstered up. Let me know how you feel in the comments down below because every time that I wear this makeup, I am feeling mischievous and beautiful and all powerful like the trickster is. If you liked this video, make sure that you give us a huge thumbs up and make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button. If you're gonna come back next week and you're gonna watch the next video anyways, why don't you just go ahead and subscribe and get sent a notification the second that it comes out. Thanks again and I'll see you guys later.